let's talk about the advantages of microservices. Now, we um, it's easy for the uh, IT profession to get carried away with the, the latest trend, and uh, it, it could be that they think, well, microservices are the latest uh, trend of the savior of it all, and, and they're all advantages. They do have some very distinct advantages. Let's, let's not dismiss that, and we'll talk about all those advantages. Um, later, we'll talk about some of the disadvantages. The advantages are that each microservice is relatively small. It's easy to understand. It can be deployed independently of other microservices. It can be scaled independently. That is um, because it's a... Oh, we'll talk about it later. It can be deployed on hardware best suited to its resource requirements. Uh, fault isolation and fault rollback is much easier. And development teams can be organized around separate microservices. And microservices can be developed using different technology stacks. So they seem to be the recurring uh, advantages that come out with microservices each time. So we'll go through them uh, one by one. Small services are easier to understand. Um, I've tried uh, writing and maintaining enough uh, programs to, to say, yes, that's true. Uh, it, gets, it gets a certain size and it becomes really difficult to understand what's going on. It's just too big. So small um, applications are much better because they are much easier to understand, much easier to keep coherent and much easier to manage. Now, small code base, uh, there's some minor things. Um, if it's small, I mean, the, the uh, development environment will just have no trouble loading it up and compiling it and, and debugging it. And developers tend to be more productive when the code loads, compiles, and uh, deploys much faster. So, small is an advantage. Now, independent services, uh, the advantage is there is that it, with all these independent services, they can be deployed independently. You can have the major application running and you can deploy a new version of one particular microservice. And the application uh, is, is minimally disturbed by this. Now this means you can be upgrading applications or upgrading uh, services pretty much on the fly, constantly. And the application won't fall over. Um, this this is highly desirable. So you get into continuous deployment. Uh, it also one of the the other interesting side effects is because you have such a small and easily comprehended uh, um, microservice, you tend to get one team responsible for it, and because there's not this um, collective uh, contribution into some major application, that one team gets to be responsible from cradle to grave from development through deployment through until it's eventually it's taken out of service. Operators love this because it means that uh, you, the, you know, the people who created the mess get to fix it. We have flexible and responsive scaling. Now since each service is a separate process, each can be scaled independently uh, of other services. So uh, if you have, I mean, if you have all these microservices, you, can, you don't have to have 20 of each. You can have 20 of this one, and five of that one, and 50 of the other one, and it just depends um, what actually is in demand. A microservice can be deployed on hardware that suits its requirements. So for example, if you have a CPU intensive uh, microservice, you can, you can deploy that on a, um, you know, a, a fairly powerful CPU. Similarly, if you have a memory intensive um, and microservice, you can uh, deploy that on a service that has adequate uh, excess memory. And uh, this also goes for the uh, database. If you have a database intensive microservice, well, you can deploy it on a system that has uh, uh, very, very good access to a database. So there are, there are some advantages on, in this independence between the uh, microservices. Now, another advantage uh, is that when it comes to microservices, you have a much more scalable development. Uh, you don't have to coordinate the efforts of the entire team around this one application. You can, provided you have clean separation and very well established um, APIs, you can simply scale the uh, team, um, the development team, by having uh, so many different teams developing different microservices. And when you have 
as I believe it's uh, Amazon has, hundreds of these microservices, that means you potentially you can have hundreds of teams, each of, say, five people or something of that nature. Um, now, Martin Fowler did also uh, note in one particular case that there was an organization that did have a um, microservices architecture and they, they were in a certain amount of trouble with their development. So the usual response was to throw a whole lot more people at it. Now, because it was a microservices architecture, the extra people could be absorbed and made more productive much more easily because the, um, each of, you know, the extra people went to different teams and uh, could be absorbed into those teams much more easily. It wasn't as if the, the efforts had to be coordinated across the entire application. So there are some advantages there as well. Fault isolation is easier when uh, you, when each microservice is a separate process because uh, if it has, for example, a memory leak or something like that, then that memory leak is, is uh, contained within that one microservice. And if it fails, then it fails. It doesn't bring the rest of the application down. Similarly, you can roll back a microservice much more easily than you can roll back an entire application. So, say for example, you have upgraded a microservice, you put it in, in uh, you deploy it, and it doesn't work, it's something you didn't think of, and uh, now you have to roll it back. Well, rolling back a single microservice is much easier than trying to roll back the entire application. So there's another advantage there. Now one of the advantages that uh, people have referred to a bit is the, um, the fact that you can now have polyglot systems. That is, because each microservice is strictly isolated be behind its API, it doesn't matter what you use to implement it. So you can have, if you wish, different technology stacks for each microservice. Uh, the, the wisdom that comes there is uh, you could, uh, you generally you wouldn't. Um, the more mature organizations tend to have a fairly restricted uh, range of technology stacks. Not all the same, but they have a restricted range and they stick to those. Um, too much variety does get counterproductive. Anyway, with um, microservices, you can afford to uh, try a new technology stack on a, a one microservice and, and test it out. And that's much easier to do than if you, you're having to commit to the entire technology stack for a complete application.